there folks, it's been a while since I've done any casting and it's Big Bang Tournament time. I'm just going to preface this by saying I haven't casted in a long time, I've only recently finished getting my computer sorted out, I came out of exams, all of that jazz, I haven't really got back into the game yet, so I might be slightly inaccurate uh, as far as what I'm saying is concerned, or I might not be quite on point, uh, and I might have some dodgy sound stuff going on in the background, for instance you might be able to hear computer fans and stuff. Um, it will be worked out once I've done proper sound checks, but I was kind of thrown into this uh, casting role for this evening when I wasn't expecting to be, so I haven't got everything fully set up yet. Anyway, having said that, let's introduce the players. Uh, we have Bob Chaos in orange down here, and Michael2109, it's known as Michael, in, uh, in Gunmetal Grey up on the north side on uh, Blitz System. Hermes is the name of the planet. Anyway, so what are the builds going? We've got Michael with a bot and an air factory there, interesting enough. I've seen a lot of bots. They seem to be very, very good. Uh, although, on this map, given the size, some have told me that vehicles are probably better, and I might agree with them. It depends on your build, because I've also noticed in the time that I have had to play PA that Grenadiers are almost a hard counter for vehicles, which is something, something quite amazing. Anyway, so... Air is good. We've got a little bit of air scouting going on from both players. Let's have a look at what Michael can see. He's been able to see the mainstay of the build there. And Bob Chaos has been able to see the mainstay of the build at the top as well, which is good. Meanwhile, we've got two lonely air fabs going for the same patch of metal as a bot fab. These two are going to see each other and be hopefully noticed by the other player and countered. For instance, the air fabs can be instantly killed by these interceptors right here which is going to be a right nuisance, especially considering the air fabs are literally one-shot kills. That's probably why you might not want to use air fabs. But given the uh, potency of uh, bots on this map, players might decide to go for it anyway. But, so we sort of got docks engagements all over the planet, which is to be expected, to be honest. Um, Although, that bomber there, missing those dogs, getting a few hits, but not too much, manages to save the mechs, and that's the important thing, especially given the uh, that Michael has been trying to raid, he's falling behind just a little bit, insofar as he's spending too much right now, maybe he needs to hold back on that and expand a little bit more, but uh, Bob Chaos is doing quite a good job at locking down expansions, he's got some dogs sort of floating around in various different locations, pinning down those expansions and stopping them and even shutting them down as well which is good like there you lose another faber might be an idea not to get the air fabers certainly as i've already covered and a transition to vehicles here as well given the uh, close proximity these two bases have and the lack of travel distance vehicles is an okay uh, okay strategy to go on on this map i think although uh, again once you manage to see those vehicles make sure you have some anti-air in especially given the bombers going around and also um, possibly mix in some grenadiers to counter them. Meanwhile, in the back of Michael's base, we've got a few docks here doing a little bit of raiding of the P-Gens. Given that uh, Michael is floating a little bit, it's not going to do too much damage, but it's just that little bit of annoyance that drags the attention away from where it can otherwise be spent uh, helping his war effort in a better situation. I say his, of course it could be hers, but you never know. Meanwhile, we've got a lot of mechs being claimed on the other side of the planet there by that single air fab. He's going idle at the moment. He needs to be queued up just a little bit more. He's probably come over here to uh, build something, but there is that bomber there. Maybe get a, an interceptor over there to deal with that. Indeed, that's what they are doing. Again, apologies if there's any background noise. Uh, I will try and sort it out for the next recording. Again, shutting down lots of mechs. So this is really going to be a big problem for Michael going forward because while Bob is expanding continuously Michael is getting pushed back a little bit especially considering Michael is actually lost out to Bob on vehicles here as well Bob has managed to stop that push from Michael a few dogs coming in from the back though they could take a couple of these fabricators down and uh, lock them down here preventing that p-gen expansion but again it doesn't make too much difference simply because both players are floating they're so heavy on power right now that it really doesn't make a difference if these in, in uh, infernos however get behind those p-gens and in range of them they can do a fair amount of damage but uh, unfortunately they are getting shot by those uh, by those ants there or bolos whatever you prefer to call them i prefer to call them ants but there we are the t1 tank the tank. There we are. Inferno around the backside again. Going to come in and do a little bit of damage there. Don't need that drop down. 
It's the instantly shutting it down. It never got built though, so it doesn't do too much uh, in the way of usefulness. And the air fab gets away clean before the anti-air comes in as well. A vehicle fab comes in, tries to reclaim some mechs. And uh, Michael actually in the green for pa uh, metal now. Back to 100% efficiency. Bob Chaos still a little bit ahead on metal, but a large unit force out in the middle now. And uh, it looks as though Michael is going to have a hard time dealing with this. All of his units are scattered around pretty much everywhere. And on the army tab, Bob is 20 up at this point. And uh, three factories up as well, which is quite a significant advantage on a planet this size with uh, the scarcity of metal that there is. It uh, is definitely one where you want to conglomerate your units into big pushes rather than have them all dotted around. Dotting around is fine for the first couple of minutes while you're trying to lock down expanding fabers, but beyond there, you really want all your units grouped up because otherwise you will just end up uh, single filing into your death and having nothing in your base to deal with this. Like here, next to no units in the base with quite a few coming in, which is a shame. I think uh, Michael overinvested in power very very heavily early on look at that almost 2k float which is insane amount to be floating especially given the uh, lack of metal he has I think a massive overinvestment there again only need to spend what you what you need uh, build what you need rather and again all these units just going in a good uber cannon there only to kills a few off simply because there are so many infernos at the front but the problem that uh, michael's going to have now is that he's going to fall behind having to defend this and more units are just going to keep streaming in from bob and he's also getting a fair bit of air superiority now as well including a pelican being built what is this i cannot see that being useful commander sitting idle here not particularly great but then again this game is pretty much sealed insofar as uh, insofar as the victor is concerned. I'm pretty pretty confident to say that Bob has won this game. It's going to be very very hard for Michael to pull back, having uh, fallen behind on mechs, got lots of units in his base. If he could use his commander a bit better rather than building pgens right now, he might be able to defend against this and give himself a chance to build some build some more units. But he definitely wanted a few more grenadiers earlier on, and that, that way he'd be able to kite against the uh, against the vehicles a lot better than he did. And sitting in the inferno there, really not a great idea, not great at all. And using the commander to uh, take down these units here as well, You're losing quite a bit of health, dropping to seventy-seven percent there, not great. And a teleporter, wow. Okay, now I see the. Uh, the pelicans use coming in with the combat fab building a teleporter there I'm not sure it's necessary but he might be wanting to move his commander in after all that'll be fun to see if he does decide to end this with a com box uh, he's deciding against it. it's just ma uh, massively reducing the movement uh, time and space which is good if you can uh, afford to do it and know that it's not going to cost you too much insofar as uh, games because a second teleporter what wow this guy is going all out making sure that uh, Michael has no escape and indeed the commander wandering in this general direction <laughs> Ubercan's really not his friend today. Wondering in that general direction, is only going to meet a teleporter, and more units are going to struggle through that teleporter, unless he can kill the combat fab. Can he kill the combat fab? That is the question. The teleporter does go up. Units are going to go through. He manages to kill the uh, pelican, but concedes the GG. Nonetheless, probably could have done that a long, long time ago. Bob Chaos is the victor of his game in the first round of Big Bang Tournament. Stay tuned for more games in Big Bang. Thanks again. As always, until next time. And the tribute now. If they have the ultimates, this could be really useful there with the Valor getting the stitches stunned, but the Tychus laser there. Oh, the wailing arrow. Silence. Oh my goodness. Down goes Tychus. No, he does survive. Does the Lily survive? Valor, the Lily survives the Valor! Oh my goodness! <laughs> Diablo trying to get the pickup on Consume, but instead he gets way out of position, stunned by a noob, chased down by Stitches. Will the claw get off? No, it doesn't. The blue team are on the uh, wrong side there, and one in fact gets put in the cocoon. Oh, here comes the hook, and <laughs> Diablo, Diablo goes down. Getting caught.
but the curse for blue team. I'm not sure that is the best curse that's possible because some of their team are dead and they are going to be playing well to push a bit. Lily goes down though from the uh, Tyrrell stun there, really nicely done.